Om Shanti is a greeting which we use to remind ourselves I am a peaceful being. So Om means I am and Shanti means peace. So every time we greet each other saying Om Shanti, we're only reminding ourselves and reminding the opposite person that I am, I am a peaceful being. In a world where most believe that stress is normal, turmoil is normal, disturbance is normal, Raj Yoga teaches us peace is normal. It's very important to be clear about what is normal. Because whatever is normal is what we will try to achieve. Health is normal or disease is normal? Health is normal or disease is normal? Health is normal. So if I'm feeling physically a little uncomfortable, I will do something about it till I start feeling normal. But that will only happen when I'm very sure of which one is normal. But if I call a disturbed state of the body as normal, then I will allow it to remain disturbed. And if I allow it to remain disturbed, what will happen? Let's say there is a little pain in my knee and I say, this is normal. And I will do nothing to heal it. And then what will happen? It will get worse. And yet I can manage with life. A little pain, but I can walk around and do everything. It's normal. And I get used to living with that pain in my knee. And then one day, a situation came which needed me to run. But that day, I could not run because I had not healed it when I just needed to walk. And I had called it as normal. So never ever call a pain, a disturbed state of mind, as normal. Because if we keep it as normal, we will do nothing to heal it. Why do we need to learn meditation? Why should we learn meditation? Why should we just spend a few minutes with ourselves every day just to check any aches and pains? Any aches and pains? Any disturbance, any worry, any anxiety, any holding on to past, any holding on to hurt, any critical thoughts about somebody else's behavior, anything which is going to shift me from my normal of peace, my normal of love and respect. And so every morning when we spend few minutes to check is everything fine and then we can take those few minutes to clean any blockage which is there and to bring it to normal. But if we don't pause to check if everything is fine then we get used to start living with pain. Stress is normal. Stress is normal? No? Okay. Which are the uncomfortable emotions which I have started believing are normal? Hanji? Worry is normal. Anything else? Any other emotion which is normal? Love is normal. And hurt? Hurt? Not normal. What else is normal? 
happiness is normal. Upset, not normal. What else is normal? Peace is normal. And stress, not normal. What else is normal? What is normal? Humility is normal. And ego? Contentment is normal. And desire? <laughs> Contentment is normal. And desire? Desire is also normal. And never-ending desires? Normal. And when I always have a desire, I can never be contented because I always have one more and one more and one more. Anything else left which is normal? Satisfaction, contentment, patience. Expectations is normal? Not normal. What is normal? Acceptance is normal. Expectations is abnormal. Acceptance is normal. Expectations is abnormal. Patience is normal. Being hurried always, abnormal. So now we've just got two lists. Two lists. Ego. Desire. Hurried, stress, expectations, hurt, impatience, worry, irritation is abnormal. Humility, contentment, patience, acceptance, love, peace, Happiness is normal. Two very distinct lists. And now I have to ask myself, which one of these two am I living most of the time? Which one of these two am I living most of the time? The normal one or the abnormal one? When we know what is normal, and we know what is not normal, then why is it that we are living the not normal list more than the normal list? What could be the reason? We know that this list is normal, the other list is not normal, and then how is it that I am living the not normal list more than the normal list? How many of us have ego? Anji? We don't want to change. Anything that is not normal will cause discomfort. I'm experiencing the discomfort and now I'm not only experiencing the discomfort at a personal level, it's radiated to a global level. And so like you shared, we are going through times of turmoil. Even when we say we are going through times of turmoil, we are looking at times of turmoil on a global level. And because we say times of turmoil on a global level, we look for peace on a global level. And then we try lots of ways to create peace on a global level. But we still don't seem to be able to create peace on a global level because we are creating it on a global level. The turmoil on the global level was not created on the global level, it was created on the personal level. You cannot create turmoil in this room. How do we create turmoil in this room? If we want to create turmoil in this room, how will we create the turmoil in this room? I want to create turmoil in this room. Chaos, confusion, violence, Abuse. I want to create that in this room. How to create it? Right. Yeah, aggression. I want to create it in this room. How to create it? We want to create violence in this room. How do we create it? Negativity. 
Can we create violence in this room? Yes. How do we create it? So which means we'll have to create the violence? How do you create violence and terror and turmoil in this room? We'll have to create it in the... We can't create it in the room. We'll have to create it here. And whatever gets created here comes out in my actions. What's in my actions? It's in the room. And now someone enters the room and says, Oh, there's so much turmoil in this room. And then they start looking for ways of how to create peace in the room. And then we can have conferences and seminars, create world peace. Create world peace. Eradicate, eradicate terror, abuse, violence from the room. And we've been trying. And instead of getting eradicated, it seems to be, it seems to be, Increasing. Why? Because we're trying to eradicate it from this room. What's the only way to eradicate it from this room? The ones who started it, and the ones who are creating it, and the ones who are contributing to it, will have to heal themselves. And who is that one who's doing it? Who is that one who's contributing to it? And so spirituality says, you cannot eradicate turmoil from the world. You have to eradicate it from yourself. You cannot eradicate violence from the world. You have to eradicate it from yourself. Any of us ever create violence? Any of us ever a part of terror? Any of us ever a part of terror? Terror attack? Anyone been a part of terror attack? No? Anyone's ever been a part of a terror attack? When we say terror attack, we only think of terror attack out there. There is a terror attack here every day. Anyone ever been a part of terror attack? Ever been a part of terror attack? Do you know how it feels, that terror attack? Where I hit myself. I attack myself with my every single wrong thought. And I cause pain to... I cause pain to myself. I abuse myself, I exploit myself, I terrorize myself. There are many brothers and sisters who will say today, I have a lot of fear in me. They live in fear. They live in fear. Fear of what? They say we don't know, but there's fear. So it's not countries which live in fear. It's not cities which live in fear. It's not communities which live in fear. I live in fear. And who terrorized me for me to live in fear? Who terrorized me for me to live in fear? I, me, myself. So over a period of time, I created a particular way of thinking and I created that thought and scared myself. Let's say I'm sitting on this chair. I can just start creating a thought. What if this chair breaks? Anything wrong with the thought? Anything wrong with the thought? But there is a possibility of the chair breaking. There is a possibility of the chair breaking. So what's wrong in creating a thought? What if this chair breaks? What if I fall? What 
if I hurt myself? What if I injure my spine? What if I have to go through a surgery? And what if I get paralyzed during that surgery? And what if I remain on bed for the rest of my life? Who's stopping me from thinking like this? Nobody. And it all started with, what if this chair breaks? Is it okay to create a thought, what if this chair breaks? Why? But there is a possibility of the chair breaking. So do any of us ever create a thought, what if? What will fill in the blank? What about my children fill in the blank? Ever? Ever? So did you tell yourself that time, why am I creating this thought? The chair is not going to break. But the day I created the thought, what if the chair breaks? I said to myself, it's normal to create this thought because there is a possibility of the chair breaking. So why can I not create a thought that what if the chair breaks? So that day my mind started creating a thought, what if the chair breaks? Only one thought. For some time it retained only as that one thought, what if my chair breaks? But then my mind got into the habit of creating the thought, what if? And so, after some days, it got bored of creating the thought, what if the chair breaks? Then it needed to think something more. And then it created the next thought, what if I fall when the chair breaks? And then for a month I created this thought, what if I fall when the chair breaks? Then I got bored of that thought. And then I created the next thought, what if I hurt myself when I fall when the chair breaks? And by that time, my mind has started getting habituated to thinking that way. And then I visualized it right till I was on bed crippled for life. And when I brought it to that scene, now I started getting scared looking at that scene. Till it was just the chair breaks, I was okay. Now what if the chair breaks? But then when it was what I hurt, then I went in for a surgery, then I got crippled, I started scaring myself. And I started living in, I started living in Fear, fear of, fear of, fear of an image which I had created. I created the picture and then I'm looking at that picture and getting scared every day. And now I reach a stage where that fear has become my predominant state of mind. And then I've reached a stage where fear is become a very natural thing for me. And who terrorized me? I don't need anybody else to make me go through this pain. I need no one. I only needed one thought. What if the chair breaks? And neither my parents nor my teachers, nor my family and friends taught me that this thought, what if the chair breaks, is not a right thought. They didn't teach me. So they taught me what to speak. They taught me how to write. They taught me how to read. They taught me how to walk. But they did not teach me how to think. Because, why did they not teach me how to think? Why did they not teach me how to think? They taught me every word. A for apple, B for ball, C for chair. Everything was taught. But they didn't teach me not to think what if the chair breaks. Why did they not teach me what to think? Because no one taught them how to think. They can only teach me what someone else 
taught them. And so generations to generations to generations, we are teaching our next generation what to speak, how to walk, how to read, how to write, and then tomorrow talent and tomorrow skills, but nobody is teaching the next generation what to think. Why were we not learning and teaching what to think? Because we thought, we believed that thoughts just happen to us. They just come to me. I am not creating the thought. The thought is just coming to me. So it's not my fault that I had this thought, what if the chair breaks? That thought just came to me. I didn't do anything for it. You know? Yeah? This thought can just come to me randomly. What if the chair breaks? What's my fault in that? And so when that thought came to me, I allowed it to stay. And I created more and more and more. And every time I was creating this fear and this worry, I said to worry is, to worry is normal. To be concerned whether the chair breaks is normal. And then that worry, worry, worry escalated to a very scary picture. And today I've painted that picture and I look at that picture every day and I get scared. So who created the turbulence, the turmoil, the terror and today the fear and the pain? Who created it for me? One thought. So the most terrifying terrorist lives here for me. And the most peaceful healer And the most peaceful healer lives here for me. Lives here for me. So the thought which creates what if the chair breaks lives here. And the thought which says, why are you even thinking like this? Nothing is going to happen to this chair also lives here. It all depends. It all depends who I'm making friends with and who I'm talking to more often. You know, like we have two types of friends. One set of friends is, what if the chair breaks? And one type of friend is, nothing will happen to the chair. How many of us have two types of friends? We all have two types of friends. Which friend would we prefer? Nothing will happen to you. Similarly, we have two here. Two sets of thoughts. One set of thoughts, always worrying, fear, complaining, criticizing, hurt, pain, holding on to the past. One set of friends. Other friends, nothing will happen. Choro. Nothing is going to happen. Why are you worrying? Look at the chair, it's so strong. And even if it breaks, so what? Such a beautiful carpet below that. Even if that tears, never mind one strong stage before that. Even if that breaks, never mind there is a carpet below that. And even if everything happens and even if you die, so what? You the soul will move on to the next costume. So what? So what to fear? Nothing. So either I can live a life where I'm fearing things and either I can live a life where I don't even fear my death. It's two absolute, two absolute extremes depending on who I made friends with. So meditation means every day calling up that friend, calling up that friend who says very nice things to me. And makes me feel nice, not only when I'm sitting on a very comfortable chair, but who makes me feel nice even if I'm sitting on a very, very shaky, three legs broken chair. Even then that friend talks nicely to me and able to create right thoughts. Mm -hmm.